Store. So buckle up and settle in, cause I'm getting down to my 8-bit jam. When the swingers sing and the piano hey, plays, I'm and gloves here, and today we're going to be talking about the full diminished chord. In this video, we're going to build a couple. As part of the exercise, we've been given root notes, so we need to build the chords. And then I'm going to talk about the properties and a couple other nifty things. But let's get right to building. So, building a fully diminished chord. A full diminished chord is built by taking a diminished chord and adding a diminished 7th. So a diminished 7th, for those of you who have never heard you're like, diminished 7th, that's kind of strange. I thought 7th were major or minor. Well, we can go a bit further. So here we have a G, and we're going to put down a 7th. So a 7th typically in G major is F sharp, right? That's the 7th. So to get a minor 7, we lower it a half step, and we get an F natural. So that's a minor 7. And then if we go one more, it is now a diminished 7th. So we need to lower it again. So we need to make this an F flat. Now we have a diminished seventh, and that's how it works. And it's got to be an F flat. If it's an E, then it's uh, then it's a major sixth, and so that's wrong. It has to be an F flat. It's one of those things. And now we are going to add in the rest of it. So now we need a diminished G chord, G diminished. So to do that, we will put in a G, a B flat, and it, we're putting in our third, and and a, uh, what am I saying? A D flat, right? Because we need a diminished fifth or a tritone away from G. And now we have our diminished chord. And that's the process. You want to be very aware of your inharmonics because inharmonic equivalents are actually more commonly used with this chord when musicians talk amongst themselves. You will, so the chord symbol, uh, I can explain this through the chord symbol pretty well. So let's go to chord symbols. Make sure you're on just jazz. Um, okay, so we're gonna hit control K. So the chord symbol the way you would do this is well We know it's a G chord. We know it's diminished and the symbol for diminished is an O So if I move on from here, that's our chord symbol thus far But we need to indicate that this is a seventh because this would only tell us it's a triad So we add G O and then we add a, a seven and that is a G diminished seven chord And this is fully diminished remember half diminished only has a minor seven So we type the, the number zero in mu score on the jazz notation to get a half diminished symbol. But here we are fully diminished. So watch out, you'll see lots of double flats. Double flats are pretty common with these. So uh, inharmonic spellings, be careful, get good at it now, because when we start doing inversions, the inharmonic spellings are gonna be a lot more tricky to sort of pick out. So okay, that's what we have going on there. That's a G fully diminished chord or G diminished seven. You'll also see it called, um, cause this, if we look at this F flat, we're like, well, that's the same as E natural, right? But we don't write it cause it's uh, wrong as far as like inharmonic. When we're working in a key, we have to work in that key. And so if we say that now we're kind of working in a different key, it's a different uh, deal. But you'll hear it said sometimes as a G flat five, you might hear flat three, but uh, usually it's kind of implied if they follow it up with a flat five and then a, a add six. Because you're adding the six technically, right? Because if this was an E natural, that would be the six and the key of G. And so they would say like add six, flat five, add six. You see stuff like that. G minor, whatever. There's, all, there's like a number of ways you could say this. But this is a common chord symbol. You'll see this one a lot. So, okay. That is a G fully diminished chord. Uh, let's build another one. You notice I have some repeating in here, and some of you might be wondering, you know, I have these re repeating chords. Sometimes they just jump octaves. Part of that's to get you more comfortable to work with certain ledger lines, um, work with the extremities of the staff, as well as um, you have some chords that you memorize, and you can use those as anchors to build other chords. Because when you're quick at one chord, it will speed up the chords around it, because you can think relative to that chord. So it's useful to have some where they, they repeat um, every now and then. So it sticks in your head and you have some references to work off of. So, okay, let's build another one. Let's do, uh, let's do this here. Uh, let's do the D. So here we've got a D. I don't want to do too many because this is your worksheet and I've done them all already. There's the answer key. So here's a D. So we need to build a D diminished seven. So we have D. We know we need to build D diminished. It looks like that. My speakers have not been muted. Now they are muted. So we have D, F, and A flat. That's a D diminished chord. And now we think, well, minor seven to D is C natural. And you can think of the dominant seven if that helps you. So we put down a C and we need to lower that one more, right? And so we lower it and now we have C flat. And so this is another one where it's gotta be a C flat. You can't say B natural, it must be C flat. And then, you know, we hit control K and we put down, well, this is a D, 
uh, a D fully diminished. So we put an O and a seven, and that'll put down fully diminished for us. And we can move it around. Typically, you know, they're up here. So yeah, having it down there is like weird. But anyways, okay, so that's that. And there's the answer key. Let's, uh, let me share with you a couple sort of interesting properties this thing has. So the G fully diminished chord is a chord that splits the octave into four equal segments or three equal segments, whatever. It splits it into equal segments and into minor thirds. So, uh, right, from here to here is a minor third, from here to here is a minor third, and from here to here is a minor third. And that spans the octave, and then we, we keep going. And uh, So it's, it's kind of interesting in that this is a chord that splits the octave into equal segments, so that's kind of useful. You can build um, what's called a diminished scale. They're actually using two diminished chords. You can actually build them. It's uh, pretty interesting. Oh, and another really interesting thing, because it's got this going on, if you raise one a semitone, it will actually form a, a half diminished chord, uh, and that will become the seven. Let me show you. This is a uh, it's pretty cool. So let's say that for example, we're working with this G diminished seven, and we say, well, let's say instead let's raise this one semitone, one half step, whatever you want to call it. So it's flat. So we'll make it natural. Um, the property is that if this becomes natural. And it's really useful in songwriting because now you can make like smooth transitions by deliberately like moving things up and down. Um, but now that this is natural, this becomes the note that is the seven of a half diminished chord. All these notes are still the same. Um, you have to do a little bit of inharmonic dancing, but uh, let me show you. So we can put down here. So this is F. I mean, this is D. So that's going to be our new seven. We can move this F flat down here. And we'll keep it flat to show you the transition. So we just move the F down. Uh, this G can be moved just straight over, and the B flat can be moved straight over. Okay, so we have some funny things, but we know this is our seven, and so we're gonna make a root position thing. So we can write this E as an, uh, well, yeah, we can rewrite this E as an E double flat. And, or was it F flat? We can write just as E natural. I am tripping. We can just rewrite it as E natural. And so now, we, can, we don't even need this. We can get rid of that. So we have a E half diminished chord. And if we look at it, sometimes it's a little more involved. You get some weirder inharmonics. But that's one of the cool things. You can take any note, any note inside a diminished chord, lower it a half step, and that will become the seven of a half diminished chord. So it's really interesting. And if you go the other way, um, I won't show you the example of this, but instead of if lowering, what if you raised it? Well, if you raise it, it will become, I believe, the root of a dominant chord. So these are some of the things that we're going to, that become much more useful to us later, but I figure I'd drop a couple of them just as examples. But if we looked at this, we'd have E to G minor third, E to B flat, which is a diminished fifth, and then E to D, which is a minor seven, which is indeed the formula for an E half diminished, let me, where's the zero, half diminished chord. You could just put like E half diminished because the seven's got to be there if it's, some people add the seven too, but it makes no, you don't need to because if there's a half diminished, it has to have a seventh. So yeah, that's what's going on. So that's a, that's a pretty interesting quality. Uh, as far as like tonally, this is what we call, so there's like we have this thing called functional harmony, and we'll talk about it more later. It's after you get comfortable with chords. But functional harmony, and this one, this one can play the role as a dominant substitute. It generally plays the role of a, a dominant chord. So normally, you know, the fifth plays the role of anchoring us back to the one. We can use this chord to do a lot of really cool things. Um, there's some neat things you can do with the fourth that will allow you to, or a... Um, a raised supertonic, and if you remember from the chord names, you'll begin to, that's when the chord names start popping up. You're like, oh, tonic, supertonic, mediant, and they just start tossing them out there, and you got to know what they are. So we talked about those earlier, but uh, that's the second scale degree, and so if you raise that, you can do actually some pretty cool chord progressions and pivot moves that are pretty common inside of, uh, inside of harmony. So yeah, we'll talk about that stuff later, but just some cool things. You can go ahead, make some chords, try it out yourself but the answer key is included. If you have any questions, let me know. Some of the things I sort of scaved around so they weren't like 100% accurate, but don't like scave me on the details quite yet because 
I'm sort of sparing them until we get to the you know actual rules. Uh, subscribe, support me on Patreon. I really appreciate it. And have a blessed day. Explore the universe.